Hi, my name is Enoch Hernandez and I'm an application engineer at Hawkrid Systems. Today we're going to be learning about the Feature Manager Design Tree. The Feature Manager Design Tree will activate once I'm inside a part. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my SolidWorks Resource tab here inside the Task Pane. And I'm going to select where it says Welcome to SolidWorks and I'll get the Welcome window. This is exclusive to SolidWorks 2018. In it, I can go use this as a shortcut to open a part, an assembly that's new, or a drawing, see all the recent documents that I have open, go to my recent folders, check out the resources. I'm going to open up the Arc tool. Now that I'm here, I'm going to make this isometric so we can see the model better. To the left, we can see that the Feature Manager design tree has become active. We don't really put much thought into it sometimes. We know that the three default planes are there, such as the front, top, right plane. The origin will be there. It will list all our features in chronological order. But the Feature Manager design tree is much more than that. Say that I have many features, more than what I have here, and even now that I want to make some sort of edit. I know that SOLIDWORKS has to rebuild right while I'm doing a sketch, while I'm adding something to avoid that and have no taxing in the system, I can always use the rollback bar. To activate the rollback bar, I just bring the mouse cursor to the blue line and I get the hand. Once the hand's there, I can hold down the left mouse button and drag it. And anything after the rollback bar, it will be suppressed. It will be like it was never there. And I can make any changes and it will not affect any of these while I'm doing that. So it won't tax the system. If I want to roll this back, I can always just move the cursor again to the blue line. I can left click and drag this manually and drop it again. And those features become active once more. And the other way that I can also do that is that I can always right click inside the Feature Manager Design Tree and click Select Roll to End. Now, if I want to get to certain sketches fast enough, and I don't, for example, this sketch feature here, for this space extrude, if I open up, I'd have to do this. To save that time, I can always use a flat tree display. To access that, I go to the icon here where it says Arc Tool, and I can right click and select Tree Display. When I select Show Flat Tree View, it'll open up all the features that have sketches in them, all my sketch features. So now I don't have to open up, they're there for me, and I'll follow the order that it's made, right? First the sketch, and then the feature. The other way that I can do this is by using a shortcut, and that shortcut is holding down Control T. If I do it now, it'll close it, but if I want it to open up again, I hold down Control and press T, and it'll open up the tree display. So we'll have a flat tree display. Now. Let's say I want to get fast enough to that feature and because I have so many features, I need to pinpoint where that's at. I can always use the Feature Manager filter. I can put in a name right here, so I can put Base and look at that. It went ahead and pinpointed that feature that I'm looking for. Now I can edit and I found it. Now, I want to make sure that I know exactly what it is that I'm deleting and what's going to be affected by it. For example, if I click on this arc here, you'll notice that I have these arrows activating. These are called the Dynamic Reference Visualization Tool. This tells me what belongs to what. So if I look at the arc, it's what I've selected. The parent here is the base. And the children are these purple arrows. So if I were to delete the arc, these will be affected as well. The base wouldn't be, but anything that the air purple arrows touch will be affected. To activate this, all you have to do is right-click here where it says Arc Tool, the part icon here. And up here, in this right-click box here, you'll notice that I have the Dynamic Reference Visualization Parent and the Child. Mine are grayed out because they've been selected, so I can deselect them. And I'm going to go right-click again and deselect them. And I'm going to right-click again on the Parts icon. And now that they're deselected, I will click here in the top context box where it says Dynamic Reference Visualization Parent. So I have the parent active, the blue arrows. And I'm going to activate the child as well. So anytime I click on a feature, I'll know exactly what the parent of that feature is and also the children. Another thing that we notice is that if I try to move this, and I'm actually going to close my tree display. If I try to move this, I'll get a certain... There'll be a part where it won't let me here. It's letting me go up. But let's say I try to move this fillet. Once I get to a certain part, I can't go there anymore because that's its parent. 
So the rule is that it cannot pass the cut extrude because it's its parent. So once I bring it up here, notice how I get that. So that's another great way to know that if I'm trying to move a feature that I cannot go before the cut extrude, it cannot go before it because it's its parent. So these are great things to know about the feature manager design tree. It enriches our experience and also helps us do the right things to get a very accurate model. Today's video, we were able to cover the feature manager design tree as well as learn about the rollback bar and how that can help us. Also, to be able to use the dynamic reference visualization tool, which are the parent and child arrows. And if I always need to use the filter here, the feature manager design tree, remember it's between the tabs and the part icon, and I can always just type in the feature and it'll pinpoint it. Thanks again. If you have any tips and tricks, make sure to leave them in the comments and please give us a like.